It is my honor and pleasure to introduce our Cooperberg Rittmaster Rabbinic Intern, Deborah McDowell, for some words of Torah. On a recent flight to Israel, a long one, I found myself watching superhero movies, a, a few of them. It's not my typical genre, but I was unexpectedly captivated. Now, Rabbi Kleinbaum cautioned us at the start of Rosh Hashanah that we shouldn't rely, and it's dangerous to rely on the idea of a superhero to come and rescue us. But I think what, what really excited me on this flight was, was not the prospect of being rescued by a superhero. It was, it was actually the prospect of being called and of knowing exactly what one has to do. In, in these movies, we often, as the audience, get a preview of a secret special superpower. And we watch as the hero figures out how to use it and ultimately saves the day. The hero responds to an unmistakable calling and to a clear summons to action. She responds by saying, I will do what needs to be done. In other words, hine ani, hineni, here I am. This morning we read the story, we just read the story of Akedat Yitzchak, the binding of Isaac, which is simply and hauntingly told, beginning with God's call to Avraham by name, and he responds to God, hineni, here I am. God then instructs Avraham to prepare his son to be offered up as a sacrifice. As they begin their ascent, Yitzchak calls to his father, Avi, my father, and Avraham responds with the same word that he had just used for God, Hineni, here I am. Once Isaac is bound, Avraham lifts up the knife and in that very moment, an angel of God calls him to stop, and Avraham again responds to God through this angel with those same words, Hineni, here I am. I want to focus this morning on this word, which appears three times around these most suspenseful moments in the narrative. First at Avraham's initial call, then at Avraham's more fatherly, intimate hineni for his child, and then at the sudden freezing of the action when Avraham hears a new call to stop and to change direction. Whenever the word hineni is used in Torah, it is a profound moment, either a calling from God upon a person or a pivotal relational moment between family members. There is an intimacy and an intensity of relationship that is bound up in this word. Isaac will repeat a Hineni exchange with, his, with each of his own sons, Jacob and Esav. And Jacob will answer Hineni when God calls out to him, and then he will also have a Hineni exchange with his son, Joseph. Moshe answers Hineni to God at the burning bush. And in the book of prophets, when God is looking for someone to be of service, when God asks, whom shall I send? Isaiah answers, here I am, Hineni, send me. What, what constitutes a Hineni moment today? Often direct calls, responses to calls to action, these, these are moments of duty and gravity. 
We might, for example, we might answer hineni when we feel called to do something. These moments can also be turning points of identity. It is how we can announce, this is who I am. And I will do this thing because of who I am. As they did yesterday and will again later today, our Musaf service leaders will sing Hineni as they enter from the back of the room and approach the bima. Announcing their presence with a mix of grandeur, appropriate to the day, and humility as they too are overwhelmed with the magnitude of the task at hand. It can feel impossible to know what we're supposed to do in this world that seemingly grows darker and more frightening every day. And it seems like there are calls to action coming from every direction and at every moment, each, each more acute than the next. We are at once exhausted by the constant desperation and paralyzed by choice. It can feel like every moment is a hineni moment, or it can feel like none are. Some of us hear many calls, but some of us don't. And for some of us, we hear louder calls, some quieter. What do we do if we don't feel any particular calling? Or what if no cause seems to suit our particular set of skills and abilities? We must nevertheless pick some good things to do in this world. And if we do feel called, but, but to too many causes, how do we overcome that paralysis of choice and accept that although we can't do everything, we can do some things? One answer is that we act without waiting to fully optimize that choice or even to wait to carry it out perfectly. In my own life, I, my, my example that I think of is I've been a vegetarian now for 15 years. And for the last 10, I have avoided buying products that were tested on animals. It's my, my thing to contribute. Um, and early on, someone challenged me many years ago, um, insisting that this practice was inconsistent with other purchases of mine that were funding other types of injustice in the world. And at the time, I was young, and this criticism was really very painful to me. But I came to accept that there is a limited amount of product research that I can do in a single day. I have an app that allows me to check about products tested on animals, but I can't, there's no, there isn't an app for everything I buy in, in a day, and I can't, I can't do it. We can all strive to do more, but the thing is, it's not all or nothing. It's just not. I imagine that for some, including for me, social justice activism can be intimidating at times. We have so many initiatives and calls to action that you can spend every day of the week at a different protest or a different action Ask Harold Levine, I see him nodding in the front row, and he's, <laughs> and he's at almost all of them himself. <laughs> um, for those of us who are overwhelmed with too many calls or too loud calls, we must not be afraid to respond to only some of them. And it's okay if sometimes our answers are quiet, even if the call is loud. And for those of us who feel <laughs> less called, oh, I missed something. <laughs> something funny happens, and I'm glad it happens. But I, oh, OK. For those of us who feel less called, called, I get it. <laughs> OK. 
for those of us who feel less called in the, in the call to action sort of a sense, not the phone sense, <laughs> or we feel more quietly called for whatever reason, we must take on the challenge in the coming year to listen more intently. And in response, we must say, here I am, in a voice that is at once authentically ours. Hineni is about identity. The call has to be connected to our identity. And we must say, here I am, in a way that rises to the obligation to care for more than just ourselves. It's about identity and it's about duty. So thinking back to my superhero 10 hour or 15 hour flight, I wondered at the time, why am I so into this? And I think there is something comforting about a story where it is clear exactly what needs to be done to save the day. We so rarely have stories like this in real life, where the path to repairing the world is so clear and can happen in approximately two hours. <laughs> so let us refrain from judging each other or ourselves too harshly, especially among a community like ours where we have overwhelmingly good intentions and we have many shared values. We each have a contribution, and even if yours doesn't look like mine, let us support each other's callings and each other's work. We may not have superpowers, but we each have what to give. Let us leave space for trying something out to see if it fits. Hineni is about duty and calling, but it is also deeply personal. It is about identity and individual paths to justice. Let us hear and raise up each other's hinenis and let us respond to our own calls from God or a higher power or goodness or peace. And let us each respond hineni in our own voice. Amen. Shana Tova. What a beautiful, moving, powerful, and comforting at the same time, Drasha. Thank you so much, Deborah, and we're thrilled that you're here with us for a second year as our intern, and it's the perfect introduction to our shofar sounding for the first time on this second day of Rosh Hashanah. How each of us has to figure out what our Hineni is, is ultimately the challenge God has given to us, and these Torah readings, uh, of Rosh Hashanah ask of us.